Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Pat Stieg, and I'm the Chronic Disease Prevention Coordinator for the Dakota County Public Health Department. And I want to just tell you a little bit about some of the work that we've been doing in Dakota County related to childhood obesity. Um, you've seen some data earlier about um, the rates of obesity. And as you can see here, the childhood obesity rates in the United States. I'd just like to point out that on all these slides, 1980 seems to be the year where suddenly these trends skyrocket. And I don't know what it is about 1980, but we probably need to go back to 1980 and find out, I guess. The other thing you heard earlier today was some of the costs related to obesity. And, and of course, obesity has a lot of costs for the people that are affected by it, as well as society as a whole, as you heard. But um, data from uh, a report that came out here in Minnesota uh, talks about how if the rates continue as they are, it'll add $3.7 billion to Minnesota's health care costs by 2020, which is now just nine years away, and that if the rates continue, that'll represent almost a third of the total increase in health care costs that we'll experience from one simple health condition, and that being obesity. One of the things that we know, and that you've heard from some of the other speakers, is that um, what we choose to eat, of course, is a personal choice. But the choices that we make are definitely shaped by the choices that we have. And if we have access and affordability to healthier foods, then uh, it makes it an easier choice to make. In Dakota County, we have uh, been working on a variety of fronts to address obesity um, through our SHIP program as well as even prior to SHIP. And what we look at doing with the SHIP program, if you're not aware, is to look to see how we can impact uh, people where they live, work, learn, and play, and receive their health care. So of the work that we're doing in Dakota County, I wanted to focus today on um, what we're doing with preschool aged children and specifically what we're doing with them on the nutrition side of the equation. We started this about six years ago um, when this uh, came out in the New England Journal of Medicine, which was kind of a stunning statement to think that this could be a generation that does not live as long as previous generations. And then we also looked at some of our own uh, local data. Um, and we had data on uh, young children in our Women, Infants, and Children program and found that 12.8% had a body mass index that essentially put them into the obese category as we measure obesity in children. And of course, the 2010 goal um, was to have only 5%. Um, obviously, we're not going to reach that goal in one year, and we didn't. Um, but we did uh, decide we needed to do more work on this. It led to some work that we did with the Wilder Foundation to conduct focus groups with parents and child caregivers to see if we could begin to uh, learn about what are some of the barriers to uh, and the challenges to having children eating healthier. Um, we looked at um, the, some of the results we found, uh, just as a few highlights for what the parents that we did focus groups with, was um, children's food preferences, time limitations, and the costs of food were some of the things you heard from some of the earlier speakers is what we found too in terms of what impacts what children are served. Um, we found that these parents really weren't that concerned with role modeling by themselves and, and how that impacts their children. They were not concerned about advertising and how that impacts young children. And they really weren't that concerned about their own child's weight, um, which to me sounds like three problems we need to address right there. Um, they were also uncomfortable with labing, labeling young children as being overweight. Rather, they were more comfortable in talking about this topic under the umbrella of healthy childhood development. So that was important for us to keep in mind as we looked at moving forward on how we were going to address this issue as well. So the program that, uh, well, I should say, first of all, after this, we, we got together local stakeholders from Dakota County and held in a Childhood Obesity Summit, um, where we had a lot of local stakeholders come together. We shared some of the data. We had some presentations and discussions about where to go next. And for our public health department, we decided to look at the preschool aged children through child care centers, and specifically family or home-based child care centers that are actually licensed by our county through our social services department, so we already had a relationship with these settings. And we decided to implement an evidence-based program that has been shown to be effective in changing programs and policies in uh, child care settings 
called Learning About Nutrition Through Activities, or LANA. The LANA program um, was developed here in Minnesota by the Minnesota Department of Health and the University of Minnesota through a National Cancer Institute grant. It looks at nutrition education and behavior change. Um, it looks at making um, fruits and vegetables more available, making it fun and exciting and engaging the families in these programs. And we uh, certainly saw this as a great opportunity to take this program and see if we could train our child care providers and help them to implement these changes in their settings. The complement to this program that we implemented later then is a program that focuses more on physical activity called um, I Am Moving, I Am Learning. And then we began partnering with the Bloomington Public Health Department in terms of doing some of the trainings. And we decided to come up with a name for our overall efforts. We called it Healthy Eating and Learning Through Play, or HELP. But getting back to the, uh, the LANA program, um, this is the mascot for the program, Lana the Iguana. <laughs> and I brought Lana with me today so you could meet her. And Lana, um, you would think that children might find it a little scary looking, kind of a lizard looking, dinosaur, dragon looking thing. But actually, the students love Lana. <laughs> and uh, what Lana eats, they eat. So Lana has been a big hit with the kids. Um, as, you, as I mentioned earlier, it uses taste testings for the children and introducing them to fruits and vegetables, specifically eight targeted ones that you can see on the bottom of the screen there. It uses stories and other activities that, of course, are, are commonplace in, in educating young children. And the, the puppet iguana is something, as I mentioned earlier, has been very popular. We then piloted the program in 75 of our licensed family daycare providers that served 500 children. We distributed the curriculum to them, provided training materials. We gave them a, a line of puppet to use as part of the education with the children. And then we surveyed the providers and parents to evaluate the pilot. In our pilot program, we found that the providers that participated had a 67% of the children were more likely to eat fruits who were participating in the program. 78% were more likely to eat vegetables, and 92% were more likely to try new foods. And of course, as you all know, that's a challenge with young children. We also found that 76% of the providers provided more fruits and vegetables more often at snack time. 96% offered a greater variety of fruits and vegetables. And the majority of the parents involved in the program said it reduced kind of the pickiness and fear of trying new foods amongst their children. The program um, in, involves a nutrition and physical activity self-assessment for child care, which comes from the Minnesota Department of Health, originally developed at the University of North Carolina called NAPSAC. And this uh, gives the provider a, a, an idea of kind of what they're currently doing in their setting, and then gives them an opportunity to look at how they can change and improve things. And so after the training that we have with them, we actually help them to develop an action plan based upon their assessment findings to see what type of programmatic and policy changes they're going to make to make the, a more positive nutrition environment in their setting. And then, of course, after six months of implementation, they can go back and reassess things with the NAPSAC tool to see what type of improvements they've made successfully and where they want, might want to focus their energies next. Um, we have um, um, these kits for LANA available through our public libraries that they can check out. Um, so they have easy access to them. And since we began the program, um, now we've been able to expand it through our SHIP funding to other um, family-based uh, child care centers in our um, county as well as other uh, centers, preschool programs, Head Start programs, and early childhood family education programs. The resources um, for this program are available on the MBH website if you'd like to get more information and learn more about it. And I think there's also more information on the handout that you received. But we've um, just found the program to be very successful, not only amongst the, the child care providers that have given it glowing reviews, but also from the parents and the children themselves. They said it has made a big difference in terms of the environment within that child care center. There's much more healthy eating going on than before. And that is transferred into the homes. And the children are actually doing things like saying, I want broccoli served at my birthday party, which is hard to believe. But uh, it's been very successful for us. And we'd be happy to uh, talk with you more about it uh, later this morning.